Welcome to Spread, Spread the word. word. It is October. Spooky. <laughs> Olivia just said that that's really <laughs> hardcore. Like what the? Heck? She's like eh, every year. Julia's gonna kick us off. Yes, uh, which is like an off spooky book, I would say, but still very good and atmospheric for the time of year. Um, you might recognize Jess Kid's name from Things in Jars. So I read that one and I also read Mr. Flood's Last Resort. Those ones were a little hard for me to get into. She has a very specific voice and now this one was has been great. I don't know if it's because now I understand her voice. Um, this one is a little more accessible from the get-go but she still does this thing where you're like she will go back and forth into people's brains in a little bit of like a stream of consciousness thing. Mm. Um, but there's still like dialogue and stuff and there's still like things happening. You're not just in their head, but without warning, it'll just sort of be like the narration is very internal. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is two storylines. One takes place in like six, 1629 and the other storyline <laughs> takes place in 1989. Mm -hmm. The 1629 one is about, is from the perspective of a young girl, Macon, who's traveling from the Netherlands to Batavia. Batavia is like current day Indonesia, oh. um, but it was called Batavia when it was a Dutch colony. Mm -hmm. That's where her father, who's like a merchant with a, a Dutch East Indies company, company is. Her mother died of a uh, failed pregnancy, um, but she, as you find out very early, that she's been very clearly instructed to say that her mother died of the bloody flux because her father has been in the East Indies. Mm -hmm this whole time. Oh. So she had a bear with someone, had a baby, died. Now Megan and her um, nursemaid Imki are like on their way to her father's and she's supposed to tell anyone who asked that her mother died of the bloody flux. And I like, straight up thought that was another, that you were just like, that that was supposed to be another name for like okay. a Bloody flux is dysentery. Mm. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's very funny because she, Megan's voice is very um, precocious and funny where she's just like trying to remember like say bloody flux, she's saying it over and over again and like something kind of like bad happens. She's like, bloody flux, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so like that sort of like the, the humor I feel like is very good in it. And then the 1989 storyline, it takes place on an island off the coast of Australia where um, the ship, the Batavia, the nature of same also the Batavia, um, uh, ran aground and, and sank back in 1629. So you know what's going to happen to the ship and you like learn more a little bit through the 1989 storyline of like what happened to everyone on the ship. Um, but you haven't like, I mean, as you go, you're like, well, shit, what's happened? What, uh, is Macon going to die? I mean, like, she's dead already, obviously, it's 1989, but right. it's like, oh God, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. And then um, the main character in the 1989 storyline um, Gil, he and Macon are supposed to be like the same age. Their stories are like very parallel, which is like, it's really cool and literary, I would say. Um, and he has come to stay with his grandfather on this island. And his mother died and you like slowly learn that she, it sounds like people think she died from suicide, but it's possible she died from an accidental overdose. Um, and Gil was the one who was with her and it appears that he was with her for a while before authorities came. Oh gosh. Like maybe a week or more. <gasps> oh no. Um, which is really sad. And, but so he's on this island. Really sad and doesn't look good. Right, right. Um, so he's on this island. It, it's just a fisherman's island. They're only there for the fishing season. His grandfather's there, that's who he's staying with. And uh, there's a woman who comes, um, Sylvia, who like checks in on him during the day when his grandfather's out on the fishing boats. And she also tells him that there's a ghost of a little girl on the island that has been haunting it. So of course you're like, this sounds like it might be Macon. I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's really fun. Very like atmospheric. The voices are really good with the two kid characters. I just feel like it makes anything, anything like kind of traumatizing and stressful told from a child's voice all like softens it a little mm -hmm. bit I feel like just mm -hmm. from that like innocence perspective. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference for a perspective? I really don't know and I really want to know what happens to Macon. Yeah. There's like that question because now I know enough about what happened when this ship sank and it seems like it could have ended really badly for her but I'm yeah. like hoping if that she's the ghost, happened, then that, like, possibly. Maybe, but I'm like hoping that something happens that it's like not like a horrific end or, or what something. If it, or possibly like just a psychic echo of a traumatized event. Mm -hmm. That ghosts are not always that's like, true. strictly just from like a death. From, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. So 
Um, that is really interesting. Um, so in answer to your question, I actually really don't think I have more of a favorite. They're just fun. And it's fun to see how they're like converging. Yeah. So that's all I got. Great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. So I read Little Eve by Catriona Ward and it won the Shirley Jackson Award for Best Ooh. Novel. So it is horror for sure. Uh, and it is set in the 1920s, early 1920s, early like 1921. Um, and it's set in Scotland and yeah <laughs> very <laughs> moody yeah. yeah and it is about this group of people who are living in this castle called Altnahara set on an isle um so when the tide rises of course nobody can get into the castle this man Jamie he is getting ready to deliver a, he's a butcher he's getting ready to deliver a slab of beef to Altnahara and he goes through the gate and things look a little amiss there's like blood on the floor in the kitchen and um, there's like a half-eaten bread and uh, just obviously things have been left. Um, mm -hmm. Feels like you're walking in on a murder scene. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And so he's kind of roaming through the castle and he looks out and there are cairns um, to the side of the castle. Uh, and he walks out there and there are five women in a circle, all dead. <gasps> um, their feet are touching each other and they're all missing an eye. So they're like in a pentagram shape. Yes. Yep. Missing eyes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Seems like vaguely Santanic. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Santanic. <laughs> Santana. Santa. Uh, Santana. <laughs> Sounds vaguely Satanic with the five women in a pentagram with their eyes gouged out. Yes. Continue, Danielle. So as he's going around the circle and he's like, Oh God, what has happened here? Um, he finds that one of them is alive. Uh, Dinah. She oh is shit, alive. but she's missing an eye? She's missing an eye. Oh my oh. God. Yes, yeah, she's alive. Dinah wakes up and says, Eve did this. The book opens with that. And then of course it goes into the past where you're like, how did we find ourselves here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so. Funny story. So just to tell you a little bit about the family, not family, that's living <laughs> in this castle. There is a man who the patriarch of this group called Uncle, mm. referred to as Uncle. Um, and then start. there's, mm -hmm. yep, there's Dinah, Nora, uh, baby Elizabeth, little Eve, <laughs> and, oh, and the book. <laughs> yes, and Abel. You find out that there's some sort of like, like, religious bullshit that this man has created, right? Um, around uh, these people where he says that the adder is going to come, going to rise up out of the ocean and come back and it'll be like the apocalypse and only the chosen ones will survive. And so it is sort of like uh, the snake, right? It's like oh, the snake. The original the garden snake. snake. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. He's constantly fast, making them fast while he's like eating like liver and onions. They're ha they get like little doses of honey and bread and blah, blah, blah. Um, and they leave the castle for school to be among the impure, and that's about it. So... I'll just watch them eat, like, ham sandwiches and be like... <laughs> yeah. I really want ham sandwiches. <laughs> right? Yeah. Baby Elizabeth is really struggling. She's... Poor baby Elizabeth is eating dirt. She's so oh, hungry. This yeah. is so sad. It this is, is child abuse. It's, it's oh, terrible. It is, like beyond yeah and so like all of these little things are coming out you find out Nora she um, has been pregnant a couple times but keeps losing the baby um, and every night before like Dinah uh, baby Elizabeth and Eve go to bed she comes like Nora comes in blows out the candle and says the adder doesn't have use for you tonight just like on a you, you see from Dinah's perspective in the future after she's been saved mm -hmm. Um, and you see from Eve's perspective, perspective in the past, mm. and you're just kind of like careening toward this obviously um, not great ending mm -hmm. for any of them. I gave it five stars. Did you see? Did could you figure out what was how it was going to end up? Where it ended up? Um, yeah, there was like a there was a twist, but I found like I figured it out at a time that I felt was okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like it was like three. Not too early. Yeah, yeah. It was like three fourths of the way through the book and I figured out the twist. Um, and I was like, okay, I like that. That's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen's point, the way that she and yours from what you said about like, um, seeing, having traumatic, 
um, events through a child's eyes. Mm -hmm. It is softer because Eve doesn't really understand what is happening, mm -hmm. but it all comes to light mm -hmm. later on. So very atmospheric, very dark, very moody, and it's gonna make you feel things because these kids are in a really, really mm -hmm. terrible situation yeah. and you're, you're gonna hate uncle. Mm -hmm. Is the ending satisfying? Um, yeah, it's kind of, um, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a happy ending. It's not a happy I don't ending. Know how you could no. possibly have a happy ending in that situation? No, I would call it a clever ending. Mm. I would call it clever. It is a very clever, smart ending. I feel like with a book like that, happy is not what you're looking for. You should look for like kind of like closure. Yes, mm -hmm. and you do get that. This month, I read The Second Death of Edie and Violet Bond. Mm, very like the cover. Mm -hmm. Dramatic cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the cover, as you'll see, you have two ladies. They are twins. They were both born redheads. Oh. They both also have psychic gifts. Oh. One of them has a psychic gift that enables them to die. <laughs> Essentially, die. it well, they cross the va the mortal veil oh, and okay. can like go and like find spirits. Doing so leeches, I guess, just her life force, and that <laughs> manifests through her hair. Edie is the one who can cross into the veil. Mm -hmm. Violet can channel spirits. Their mother dies in a very mysterious way. Um, that involves the veil. Basically, their mother has the has the gift that they have, and they're they both get like one half of the gift. Mm -hmm. Their mother could do both things, and. Um, their mother died doing one of these things mm -hmm. um, and in a very dramatic way and Edie saw it happen mm -hmm. and was perhaps involved. Oh, okay. And their father um, is a man of his time and he's a religious man. Mm -hmm. And while he encouraged his daughters to read and be, you know, very, um, engaged in questioning girls when they became women he was like mm, now you must put that away mm. and so interesting when, how fathers feel like that can be done right yeah. times. it's it's really <laughs> it makes a lot of no. it's really dumb yeah <laughs> when their mother dies um his their father is like okay well clearly the only thing to do is send you to a sanitarium that's the only option because That's the only option. <laughs> your mom died. When your mom died, you guys were in you, like obviously. a weird trance <laughs> and <laughs> don't know what to do because uh, you're clearly possessed by the devil. Okay. So let's send you away. So they're like, we're going to leave. <laughs> so they leave in Veto the middle of the night. that point. Yeah. We'll do this other thing. <laughs> so they leave in the middle of the night um, and they run away to San Francisco. Then they go on tour. They, they find they find people who their mother knew um, their mother kept all this from their father because they knew that she was setting aside money because she like had like seance clients basically mm -hmm. on the side <clears throat> and so she was setting aside money they find that and they find like her notes and so they have like a loose network to work from they do end up getting on this tour um, and it takes them around the country to circle back to San Francisco and um, that's where they get more involved in these shows mm -hmm. that are kind of an opportunity for young women to speak their mind, but they can use being a medium as, a, as like a, an out, kind mm -hmm. of. It's really interesting. And so they're, they're on this tour and they're they're basically on the lam though because their dad did want to have them committed. Yeah. And so they're trying to evade capture by police. Um, there's this one interesting moment where Edie goes to a, um, a speech by this woman who she's speaking on suffrage and she's making really inflammatory statements for the time, basically being like, could you like, here's a list of things that women can be put into an, an asylum for. It ranges from terminating a pregnancy to reading a novel to be, being um, excited by politics. Mm -hmm. Could like I know many men who are excited by politics. Could you imagine like 
and none of them have been committed and all like the crowd goes wild they're like bah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's all women and then slowly Edie sees pol like notices police officers oh gosh yeah and notices them drawing in the crowd and she like locks eyes with this dude and she does this thing that I feel like I've done multiple times so I feel like many people have probably done this multiple times where she's like, hey, pretend to be my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, can you grab my arm and, like, be angry with me? And, like, shake your head and be really upset and, like, yeah. So know, the police officer wag your basically finger, like, like, oh, he's got yeah, this one. She's yeah. taking care of. <laughs> he's got this essentially. one. <laughs> and it worked in this situation. So, um, it's very good. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. I like it. Highly mm -hmm. recommend. Well, thank you for tuning in to Spread the Word. October. Spooky. Spooky. Or as some might say, Santanic. <laughs> Santanic. <laughs> Thank you for Santanic. bringing it in. <laughs> what a wonderful transition. <laughs> <laughs> to our outro song. Mama on the pizza. My Spanish heart on the pizza. Peace and peace. really natural at that. <laughs>